Yes, this is the one. Perfect. And this is February 7th, 2019. Okay. Perfect. This is what he used. Or did then. And this seems like it's serious. Thank you so much for grabbing me the link. Okay. So. <sighs> Love you, Ben. This was kind of good advice at the time. This is terrible advice now. I, yeah. There is no useful case for Create React app anymore. Gatsby's death has been painful to watch. And next does all of this fine. So, with that being said, how do I recommend you decide on a framework in good old year 2022? How to pick your web framework. Uh, caveats, I don't want to start a framework runtime war. Means if you're doing client-side JS, we are presuming that you want to do it in React. I... I could fight forever about whether or not React is the best thing or if React's even a good thing. I don't want to. We're not doing that here. Because we are here to talk about how to pick your web framework on a channel that's pretty much about React. So, with that presumed, I'm not saying it's the best, I'm saying we are assuming it is for now. How do we make these decisions? Cool. So, let's start with. Do I recreate Ben's diagram and then tear it to pieces? I'm trying to decide like my order of events here. I'm going to close all these other things. I don't need them anymore. This diagram presumes a few things that I don't necessarily agree with. The first presumption here, it's right at this first bubble, is that SEO is the only reason somebody would want to SSR or generate a static site. There are a lot of other good reasons to want to do this other than SEO. I think SEO is one of the stronger ones because it's something you literally cannot do here that you can do very easily here. That said, I don't think SEO is a good differentiator here. So let's start with... The first question. I guess we should use circles and then boxes of where you land. It's like the usual. Are you building a website or an app? And we'll drop these in the corners. We'll go down this path first. Website. Okay, building a website. Uh, Will the data on this site change a lot? No. And here's where we get into our one and only non-react answer. I'm going to come through and drop logos for all these so it, like the diagram looks better after the fact here thinking do users uh, have client side interactions thinking like check out comment etc I'll put that check out comments on blogs, etc. 
So far, so good. I need to put the text inside this proper. There we go. Cool. I I saw hydrogen come up. I haven't explored hydrogen enough to take it seriously. As far as I'm concerned, it's a way to build a Shopify site. I'm going to change this to a web app. Cool. So now we're making a web app. Uh, that's what question do we want to ask here. Uh, how important or is... I, I, I want to ask the question here of is the HTML being correct down the like wire initially uh, important, but I feel like I, I want to ask the questions that lead you to that answer rather than deciding it myself or like rather than like having the, the viewer decide it themselves. Should I clarify the distinction between a website and an app? That that will take over this whole thing. I, I was tempted to make a different question to start because of that. I kind of like it being bold or uh, uh, a wide gap right now. Actually, here, here's all like the distinction. Uh, does not having HMR make building good HMR make building this miserable no yes <laughs> astro has hmr but not like working well for react subcomponents within it the like hierarchy of the hmr is not great Yeah, I, I, I don't trust Astro's HMR. I expect a full page reload when I make a change. And I, if I don't, then things are just weird. I If Astro does technically have HMR, which I'm pretty sure it does, I, I ignore it. It's almost entirely broken. Cool. So, tree one, mostly completed. Tree two is... their value in the page having content before JS is loaded. Right. Do you ever want to show anything before JS has waterfalled? Cool. I did it. Fix the diagram. Ta-da. I am happy with this diagram. <laughs> so somebody on YouTube asked that, or say that the context of who you're building for should matter. Yeah. Yeah. Not really. Like, should it matter? Probably. But the current state of the technologies is most of these things are so, like the, the things that aren't on the screen right here are so niche or broken in various ways that there isn't a customer that they really should be used for. I, I can't imagine uh, a team I wouldn't recommend one of these solutions to other than maybe Astro because it's still very new and running like a gigantic Astro site sounds a little scary right now. I'm assuming their compiler is probably not in the best state for that yet. Anyways, somebody asked, where's React? <laughs> Reacts in all of these. What do you mean? You can use React in Astro. You have to use it in Remix. You have to use it in X, and you can easily use it in Vite. Reacts on all of these. I like the dark mode so y'all stop getting huffy at me. HMR is hot module reloading. It's when you save a change in your code base. It's the thing that keeps your entire uh, browser from having to reload the whole page. Yeah, Aster disappears because it's black background, which or uh, transparent background. It's because Aster did things right that this happens. 
no, no shame to Astro for doing the right thing. This is just the, the case of the dark mode behaviors. Is the answer to just go next Prisma and TRPC? No, there's a lot of answers here. <laughs> what would I recommend using if you're unable to use a node backend? I, I would, if you're unable to use a node backend, there's a reason for that. And chances are that reason is like a big enough deal or a strict enough thing that you need to address that directly. Hey, did you know that over half my viewers haven't subscribed yet? That's insane. Y'all just click these videos and listen to me shout and hope that the algorithm is gonna show you the next one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, maybe even the bell next to it so that you know when I'm posting videos. Also, if you didn't know this, almost all of my content is live streamed on Twitch while I'm making it. Everything on the YouTube is cuts, clips, whatever from my Twitch show. So if you're not already watching, make sure you go to twitch.tv slash Theo, where I'm live every Wednesday around 2 or 3 p.m. And I go live on Fridays pretty often as well. Thank you again for watching this video. Really excited. Thank you.